Nick, would you like to introduce everyone, including our guests and yourself? Are we introducing us or just the guests? Introduce everyone, including the guests, because then you know it's going to be it's going to be free vo- free free male voices. At least I'll know who's who. Because I still don't think people have really kind of been introduced to us. But you do just introduce everyone. Hey guys, welcome to the Nice Guys of Comedy podcast with your hosts Jack Vincent and Nick Crooks. Oh, and by the way, they're from the north. That's the reason they sound that way. Right. So the plan. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say my name, mm-hmm. yeah, and then I'm going to say Jack's name, Jack. Then you've got to say hey, okay, yeah, and then I'm going to say Phil's name, yeah, and, and then Phil, you've got to say hey. Oh right, right. Okay. I, was, I was like, yeah. I don't get to say my own name. I mean, if you want to introduce yourself, you can do. Actually, yeah, we're going to make that a game now. Phil, you can introduce us and yourself. So, three, two, one, go. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Nice Guys of Pomic... Oh, fuck it, Nice Guys of... <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is just Jack again. Just letting you know that Nick is still not feeling 100%, but we are persevering as well. There are some technical difficulties, but we do battle on. Cheers, guys. I, I said, I mentioned it today at work, and the guy that I work with was like, I'd still rock a pair of Velcro shoes. Oh, I was you, like, no. you, I've lost all respect for your fashion now. <laughs> you, like, paedophile in waiting. Paedophile in waiting. The new lady in waiting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do hope one day to become a paedophile. Just like <laughs> Uncle Jimmy. Uncle Jimmy. Jeez. Can I give you a list of things that have been uh, brought back to me while I have been at work that we have uh, given either partial or full refunds for? Go on, then. Um, a suitcase covered in bird shit. Nice. Ow, how, right, it's used. we got a shit on it. <laughs> a used toilet seat. <laughs> to be fair, that, that one got refused, and the guy got so angry that um, we wouldn't return it that he cut his store card up in front of us. That'll show you. Yeah, and we were just like, uh, it's when people say, I'm never shopping here again, and you just go, good. Okay. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that. Oh, and uh, an empty bag of charcoal. What? What? Eh? Someone had bought charcoal to light their barbecue, and um, one one brick of charcoal was too big for the barbecue, so he brought it back for a refund. Wait, but I don't get it. So the bag is empty, it didn't even have any charcoal in it? Apart from one, no, apart from one, one briquette. The bag is empty, he didn't have any charcoal, but we were all so fucking annoyed by how management were not backing us up on uh, when we refused refunds that we were refunding literally everything. So I just went, right, yeah, it's fine, I'll go and get you another bag and just gave him a free bag of charcoal. Right, I'm nowhere I'm shopping now. I, I'm not going to lie, I, a part of me is just judging Phil for this. I, I appreciate there'd be some politics and it was a matter of principle, but irrelevant. He's going, that guy, that male, that, that guy is going back to his mates and going, yeah, mate, I got a very big uh, free bag of charcoal and uh, this guy just fucking gave it to me for free. You're the problem, Phil. It yeah. wasn't, it wasn't a big one. It was about the size of a laptop. Don't matter about the size, it's the principle. I don't care the size! That Karen has gone home thinking that he's... Oh yeah, no, no, I was fine with that. (laughs) You were fine about that? I was fine with that because I thought I can't be bothered to argue the point against him for him to go, I want to speak to a manager and for a manager to undermine me and say he can have what he wants. Mm. I was like, I'm not doing that. Can't be bothered. It's happened too often. So I'm doing what is right by the policy of the people that I work for and someone else isn't. I'm just going to cut out all the processes where I get really annoyed and just go, just have what you want. No. And no one questioned us when it happened. What? No. Oh, no. I'm, 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 back, to, I'm back to judging them now. No. The thing is, is we, we, would get, we were basically given authority to use our own judgment. Just like a Nazi film. <laughs> Just like the Oh well, actually, I think I can do. I can kind of beat you a little bit on the um, returns item. Now, I'd like to make it clear that by the, when I start this story, this item was sent back, but we didn't accept it, and you'll find out the reason why. So, like I said, is I used to work for an organization, a company called Arcadia. I've mentioned this before. Um, and I used to work in their head office department, and there was a department within customer services that dealt with returns. Um, so essentially, it was either a returned item to the warehouse um, or a, an, a return in store that wasn't accepted or if they just wanted to return it back to us anyway. Okay. Yeah. So this person had returned to our correspondence department. <sighs> they had returned to us 
by accident, their returns to Anne Summers. Nice. Okay. So they return. So they'd return to us their very used sex toy. Oh. <laughs> With, with with residue. Oh God, that was going to be my oh. question. Was like, did they? <laughs> when you say very, when you say very used, was it like was the rubber ground down like tires on a car when it's been on to you know when they've been on to the mm, <laughs> the reason being was that the, the, we knew it were very used was the batteries weren't working yeah. and the note was that she was returning it was that because it did not satisfy her the way it used to. Oh God! What does it mean? Like the way you that because she's ground the rubber down too much. Like, was it? Did it start off at six foot and work its way down to four foot, or what? <laughs> Either that, or it worked so efficiently <laughs> that it was now like throwing a hot dog down a hallway. Oh. Oh, you should have just messaged her back and said, "Have you not seen the Duracell advert? Stick a couple of rabbits in it; it'll go all night." <laughs> Put a few rabbits in your rabbit and you'll be fine. Yeah, that was um that was genuinely one of the that was one of the funniest days that I had in that office. Uh, it was a horrible job, but they them sort of things were the best. That one, um the other one that was I got annoyed at this one because we actually this is something they actually refunded. And this was back in the day of British Home Stars. Uh, I worked there when British Home Stars or BHS was owned by Arcadia before it went under. And um, BA, the customer service department for Arcadia paid £1,000 for a customer's wedding photos to be retouched because the wedding suits that the, the groomsmen were wearing were all described as black. But when the photos came out, they were all different shades. What? I know a cat. That's, where the fuck's this cat come from? Well, there's only one of us you know that's got a cat. <laughs> Chemo cat has just woken up and just jumped up onto the bed. I didn't know if you. I didn't know if you had a cat, Nick. I don't like cats. <laughs> All right. Sorry, <laughs> Phil. I mean, I, I, it's not like I'd kick one in the street. Or no, it's just I'm not a fan. I think I feel like we've uh, deviated from the wedding photos to a kicking yeah, a cat you, in the face. You for think sure. I've just suddenly derailed the podcast? And look what Coco's come and done. All of a sudden, nice guys of comedy podcast. Yeah, I just kick cats in the street. <laughs> well, that one was Nick. No, no, I said I don't kick you cats. You don't. You don't. No. It's not like I. No, it's I, I don't like them, but it's not like I go and kick them. I just I'm just not a fan. Oh, well, oh, I I apologize. For, I apologize for putting words in in. In the listeners' ears, I'm not like that crazy nutter who puts them in the bin. I'm not like her. Oh, do you know what? As a animal rights lover, a vegetarian, that video still cracks me up. Do you know what her name was, by the way? Carol Baskins. <laughs> I'm assuming you've watched it then. Yes, I've watched it all now. All right, okay. I like how Phil hasn't watched it, so he's got no idea what we're talking about, but proceed. Uh, yeah, Tiger King. Yeah, have you watched it yet? No. Oh. I know. I've been on the internet. <laughs> so, but he knows. Everyone knows. He's been alive, Jack. He knows. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know exactly that you've been on the internet. I, do you not remember the first topic of conversation? Was, you're a filth bag. A Carol Baskin's porn parody. Oh, no. Imagine if that's where you got your information from. What's the porn rule? What's the porn rule? Por- porn rule. What is going on? Rule, rule 34. If something exists, there's a porn parody version of it. That I do not doubt. Uh, so yeah, so they reimbursed the guy the the wedding because it had ruined his photos because they were not all the same shade, and I was fuming at that. But a thousand pounds. Well, they're not being funny, but digitally, like to get someone to Photoshop a, a wedding photo, like that's. I, I mean, I mean, I don't know if a thousand pounds. Like, if you're if you're a video ed, uh, if, a photo editor, tell me if that's a good price. I don't know. Like it seems like a lot, but well, I suppose they got to edit every photo. Haven't yeah. They? Like I had a lot of photos at my wedding. Yeah. Because I think I remember rightly that like, they were editing photos that like they weren't going to choose because obviously, as you can probably say, Nick, having been married, you you go you you have photos that you got taken but you don't choose because he's like, oh, I don't really like that one or oh, that one's better. But they had to go through every single one. Yeah. So that's probably a good couple of hundred. Yeah, but surely it's only the ones that where they're all together. Surely when they're not together. Yeah, but like if it, I, I I never saw the photos, so if it's really that noticeable, maybe you can. It's like oh, in that photo, it looks dark. I don't, I, I don't know. 
but it's not like people, people have weddings and then go, oh, good, we've got the director of photography here to make sure that everything's going to look right and, oh, best not take a photo now because there's cloud coverage and there wasn't cloud coverage before when we took the first photo. Yeah, to be fair, I just had a bloke called Matt who took a load of photos. Yes, <laughs> everyone just needs a bloke called Matt. I mean, like, you were pretty good, like, you were proper good, but I don't like taking photos, so we didn't have many uh, candid sort of, you know... Is it candid? Is that the right word? Yeah. Shots? Yeah, it is. Candid moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I find it a bit weird when you have candid photos when they're not candid in the slightest. Yeah, well, it's, I just, I, I just didn't want too many, like, you spend half the day doing fucking photos. Man. You mean, yeah, you spend half a day having a lovely time with your lovely, your lovely now wife. No, but it's not just that, because everyone has an input to a wedding. I mean, we're going a bit off track here. That's fine. But it's normally older people, and it's not even their wedding. And they're like, ooh, I thought we'd be eating night by now. Well, fucking, have a, suck on a fucking world as original, you old fuck. <laughs> All right. We, we had a schedule. You got told the schedule at the start of the day. I'm sorry, but we've got shit to do. <laughs> I.e. get married. You know, you think I.e. get married. You think you've had a stressful day? I've had a stressful morning. So fucking chill out. Uh, this is this is now your this is now your in laws like your uh, grandparent in law who is now having you having a go at, isn't it? Basically, yeah. It's just like, but it's people that come to weddings. They complain about the fucking wedding. You got it. You got for free. You came for no. It cost over fifty pound a head for you. I paid. <laughs> Well, I didn't pay, actually. My father-in-law paid. But that's beside the point. <laughs> oh, jeez. Don't bite the high hand that feeds you. Were you, were you quite, Nick, were you quite stressed the day you got married? I were all right. It was a bit stressful in the morning. I'm not going to lie, because it seemed yeah. like, no, we're going right. But no, other than that, other than my dad going when our last were a little bit late, even though she was in the same hotel, my dad went, oh, <laughs> looks like she's not coming. Oh, <laughs> All right, Dad, because that's what I need, you know. It's like, ha, 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 now is not the time or the place. Oh. I mean, one of the best things that my dad said to me, and my wife hates this to this day, my dad, on the morning, came into my hotel room and he went, right, this is your last chance. If you don't want to marry her, just let me know and your dad will sort it all out. That sounds like he was going to kill a load of people. Right. It does sound quite murderous. No, but he would, yeah, but... His idea was, if I said, oh, no, actually, I've made a horrible mistake, my dad was going to go down in front of everyone and go, right, it's <laughs> off. Um, you lot might as well go home, and uh, hopefully you'll get home safe. <laughs> Goodbye. Uh, like, that's what I could just vision my dad doing, and I just went, no, Dad, no, I, I, I've got this far. Do you think it's a bit of a myth that people get cold feet on their wedding day? No. I mean, you've got to be heartless, I think. No, but it's not a case of being heartless, but, like, it is, like, a big thing. I mean, saying this as a guy who is not married, but, like, it is a big thing that you're doing, so it's going to be quite understandable if at the last minute you're like, oh, shit, is this is this the right thing? To, am, I, am I doing the right thing? Oh, yeah. No, I, I, I get that they're going to have worries. It's I think you're just heartless if you've got to the day. Genuine. And then you're like, oh, no, yeah. And then you call it a day because whether it's the, the lass or, or the lad, you know, they're going to be waiting for you. It, that, that kind of decision isn't made off nerves. Yeah, you've been thinking about it for a That yeah. decision has been going around in their head for yeah. quite some time. My favourite story of something like this is it was a wedding that my mum's friend went to. And so they were doing the whole... They'd already got married. Bear in mind, they were. it was an extravagant married wedding. Like, we're talking couple of, like, like 50 to 60 grand on this wedding. Like, it was fucking extravagant. And then at the when they at the reception when they were doing all the toasts, they're like, "Oh, thank you all for being here." The, the, and the groom were doing a, a speech. It was like, "All right, um, so if you'd like to all uh, look under your ch- seats, there's a nice surprise for you." And under the seats was a picture of the bride having it off with the best man. Oh, brilliant! <gasps> and she they'd have been having this affair, but dun, dun, dun. yeah, yeah, they'd been having this affair. And he found out, but when he found out that his father-in-law were paying for it all, he was like, right, I'll fuck him up. Nice. So he he literally did all that. And then then obviously because it was like so soon after the actual I do's, got an annulment. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. I was like, do you know what though? That is legitimately how petty I would oh, be. I'd do that as well. I'd be like, I'd be like, yeah, fuck that shit. Fuck that bitch up. Yeah. So we definitely did go off topic there. Another thing on weddings, apparently, um, I, I read this, so it, it must be true because I read it and remembered it. 
um, if the more that you spend on your wedding, or like there's a correlation between um, the amount that you spend on your wedding and the chances of your marriage lasting. So it's like the more extravagant the wedding, you know, there is some correlation to say it's not going to last as long as, say, someone who spent just like a couple of thousand. How much was your wedding, Nick? Oh, well, the mine should last for fucking eternity. <laughs> So go on, Nick. Who? What's your Karen? Oh, my Karen story is. Oh, I've got a few, so I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with the. Um, I'm gonna go with the new potatoes story. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I am already locked in. Old potatoes couldn't give a shit. See, new potatoes, however. But new potatoes. Right. So describe to me what a new potato is to you. What does a it new look potato like? is like a small potato, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so you'd say... Small... It's got quite a smooth exterior. Like, uh, a normal potato can be, like, kind of rough, can't it? So you'd say a new potato would ha- If you went to a restaurant, a new potato would come with, like, skin on. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the potato skins, right? So this is actually taken from my wife's experience that she's told me before, and this woman comes in a lot. Now, the first time she got... She asked for new potatoes, and she was infuriated that they'd come with skin on. Eh? Uh, isn't isn't what you're describing? I was about to say, isn't that just what you're describing a boiled potato? But like, don't boil potatoes still have skin on them? No, not yeah, always. But you would, you would, if you like, if you were cooking new potatoes to serve, you would have the skin on. Yeah, yeah. Now this woman was like, um, "Oh, I have never in my life had new potatoes like that." Well, that's a lie. Yeah. So where the fuck has she been getting the new potatoes from? Because the only ones I know that are new potatoes without skin on are them dirty, horrible ones you get in a tin. Who who buys potatoes from a tin? I don't think I've that was. I didn't even know that were a thing. Yeah, I had them when I was camping. They used to go camping. Oh, yo, god, yeah. When I when I was a student, holy shit. It was dirt cheap. Yeah. You'd get them for like 13p or something. And it, just, it was just different to having beans on toast or pasta. I didn't even know that were a thing. But they don't have the skin on it in their tins. No, they don't, no. Oh, so she, that's what she's been living off and thinks that's like a legit thing. Yeah. But she said she'd never seen a new potato with its skin on. That's a fucking lie. Exactly. Fucking crazy. Biatch. That's insane. That is... So what What did your missus say? Like, what? how did this transport happen? Like, well, this is the new potatoes, and she was like arguing that she never had them like that before. Yeah. So I was just, it comes to the point where she's like, well, this is not what I wanted. Can you ask them to take the skin off? And like, you imagine skinning a new potato. That seems difficult. Surely that would take a lot of the, all, all you're left with there, surely, is just like fluffy potatoes. <laughs> like, you might as well just have mashed potato. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's just you, you, what you've described there is a chip. Yeah, yeah, or chips. It's now it's a fucking fish and chip restaurant. Like it angers me when people go. I don't even work there, and it angers me when people go to a fish and chip restaurant and order something that's not fish and chips. What like when someone doesn't want chicken from KFC? Well, or like where it's not fish related. I'm not. If if you want like scampi, fine. If you want, I don't know, squid rings, fine. But if you're going in and going, can I have chicken nuggets and chips? You're at the wrong fucking restaurant. <laughs> I, I agree with you on that. I do, I agree. Because it clearly says, I'm not going to say the, the shop, but it clearly says fish and chips. But what if you've what if you've been taken there, like you didn't want to go there, but you're not a massive fan of fish? But you won't go, would you? Have you been kidnapped and taken to a fish and chip shop? Yeah, and rocked up. Oh, fuck, I didn't like fish. Why are you taking me here? No, but like, but what if like you've gone with like a group of friends and they wanted to go? Then act like a fucking adult and say, I don't want to go here. I'm going to go somewhere yeah, else. Make up some shit. So you so you have never been out with food for friends and they've decided to go somewhere that you don't like. And you've gone, I am not going to spend time with my friends. I am going to go to a different restaurant. Well, to be fair, I won't really go to a vegetarian place. Yeah, on my own, I just ate really angrily and then got really pissed off because the new potatoes had skin on them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, yeah, I'm gonna tell you a really sad story now because I went on um, like a birthday trip to Newcastle. This is already sad. Oh my, oh my god! As as someone who was born in Newcastle, I already yeah, feel it. sorry. It's starting off sad. No, um, so, and it was my cousin's twenty first, and he'd taken all his friends, and he'd invited me and my brother and some of the other family members, and uh, they'd all wanted to go into Five Guys, which is fine. I don't mind Five Guys, but one of the lads said, "Yeah, oh, I can't go in there." Because they cook everything in peanut oil and he's allergic to peanuts, right? So you'd think then what being his friends would go, all right, we'll go somewhere else. And every single one of them went, oh, um, where are you going to eat then? And walked inside five guys. <laughs> and I had to go. I went to Burger King with some oh. kid I barely knew. 
<laughs> and now you're best friends. Be fair, I can't make an <laughs> Xbox meal, it was called, and it cost me four quid. And it came with two burgers and two large fries and a drink. That sounds pretty sick. Yeah, yeah, that is a good deal. That's, that's a good deal. I feel sorry for this kid now. I'll be his mate. Wait, hold the phone. Where was your brother? Like, why weren't he going with you guys? Uh, he can't afford five guys. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He's too busy saving for a wedding. So he he went somewhere else before. He'll have been cooking something on a toasting machine back at hotel. <laughs> <laughs> Is he like one of them who like every little penny, any little penny counts? Yeah, he's happy with a McDonald's fries, one pound thirty nine, and a ninety nine p burger. Oh, yeah, but this poor lad. Jeez, I, I feel I do. This poor lad's friends fucked him right over. I couldn't believe it. I just, I was like, you lot are well tight, and they were like, oh, we want five guys. We don't have a peanut allergy. I've had almost the complete opposite since I can't have gluten or dairy. Like, I'll go, I've been to places with someone and they're like, do you mind if I eat this pizza in front of you? I'm like, yeah, that's fine. Like, I want you to enjoy the thing that I now can't eat. So don't feel that I'm going to, you know, get all misty eyed and upset about the days when I used to be able to eat pizza. It's like, you have that and I'll have the what disgusting gluten free option of pasta and sauce. I remember when at Christmas we went, to uh, me and a couple of friends went to York for the Christmas market, and um, we didn't play. It was a, it was a Saturday, and we hadn't planned ahead, so we didn't book anywhere to eat. And it got to a point where like we wanted to have something to eat, and obviously this is this is York at Christmas on a Saturday. Absolutely rammed. Everywhere was rammed, and it was one of these situations where no one would make a decision. <laughs> on where to eat. Where do you want to eat? Oh, I'm not bothered. You make a decision. Oh, well, what about you? Everyone, everyone, everyone was like, oh, no, I'm not that bothered. I'm not that bothered. But one of those things of, I'm not that bothered, but as soon as someone decides, oh, no, I'm not really fancying that. Yeah. Well, what would you like then? Um, I'm, I'm easy, me. Yeah. You're obviously not. Um, and in the end, um, so I'm vegetarian, and in the end, I was like, right, someone pick something. And someone's like, oh, well, I've, I I won't mind like five guys, but you know, you're vegetarian. We'll go five guys and I'll have some chips. Yeah, but you can't just have chips. Yeah, I can. Just get me somewhere to fucking eat now. In the end, we got Ask Italian. Uh, and I paid £12 for five pieces of ravioli. Nice. It wasn't nice. I was fuming. Was it good ravioli? I mean, it was all right, but I paid £12 for a fucking shocking, pa- shocking fucking, what's the word? Portion. Portion. I was fucking disgusted. So what happens when, when I go out to eat now, which isn't that often, I always find that the portions of food that I make for myself at home and the portions of food that you eat when you go out are massively different. Oh, yeah. I don't think in the history of I've been making food for myself, I've ever made a super amount of pasta. When you're cooking for yourself, you make far too much. It's impossible. Yeah. No, it's it's impos- actually impossible. Because you always think, that doesn't look like it's going to be enough. I'll, I'll double it. Forgetting that it expands, and then you use the small pattern because yeah. you're an idiot. It all overflows, and then it starts pouring down the sides. And then you've got to clean the hob afterwards, and you're lazy, and you can't be bothered to clean it up. I do that thing where I think, I'll just have, I'll, I'll half it, and I'll have the other half of work, and then I think that's yeah, not enough for a I do that. So I pile the rest of it onto a plate, and I think, fuck it, I'll just eat it all. And then the pasta to sauce ratio is all off, so you're now just eating dry pasta. He's put all the sauce on the first lot. Yeah, Gordon doesn't tell you this on his fucking Christmas specials, does he? Fuck you, Gordon. So you're just working tomato ketchup on it instead as a pathetic attempt. I mean, I've never put... Whoever, whoever puts pasta, uh, ketchup on pasta is a fucking... Heathen. Hitler. Nazi. Heathen. I mean, I mean, that's what I used to do. <laughs> that is proper Grimm-style university cooking, though, that. Yeah, I can't... No, I'm not... Oh, oh yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you now. Not about that life. Oh. My sister used to eat tomato ketchup sandwiches. <laughs> no, that's disgusting. You hang around, I say hang around, it's your sister. <laughs> uh, you associate a cat, uh, cat, no. The only thing that I think I eat that is like questionable is, and to be fair, I thought it was quite questionable at first, even though I quite like it, and it's quite a common thing by the sounds of it, is when I have McDonald's, I dip my chips in the ice cream. Uh, that's too far for me. No, I, I, I think I remember I used to do that with the milkshake, with the, the chips and the milk. Yeah, some people do it with the milkshake, but that's the only that's the only really like weird thing that I do. I'm quite normal with my food otherwise. Nick, did your wife ever have any like weird cravings when she was pregnant? Wife, yeah. Um, well, this is how weird it is. Before my wife got pregnant with our first, she hated peanut M and M's, so I used to buy them <laughs> because I could eat them myself. Yeah, because you're a loving husband. Yeah, and then when she got pregnant, she loved peanut M&Ms, and now she sticks, carried on, so, so now I don't buy them. 
<laughs> just out of spite, just so I don't have to share it. <laughs> so rather than enjoy something yourself, you'd rather not enjoy something and piss her off. Yeah, instead I buy fig rolls because I know she doesn't like them. Are you basically just going to find things that you know she doesn't like so you can enjoy them alone? That's the tip of a, That's the tip from me for a good marriage. Is The first thing is buy two of everything. So if you go into the shop and your wife says that she doesn't want to and you buy a bag of crisps, buy exactly the same bag again because you're guaranteed that you were going to have to share that bag. Knowing full well. So then you can go, <laughs> here's another bag. Here's your own bag. Or you think, oh, do you know what I really fancy is a nice big bag of Doritos. Other crisps are available, apparently. And you go there and... And they're not there anymore. Yeah, that's the thing. That's an annoying thing. Uh, da- darling, where um, where the where have, you know those Doritos that I specifically bought for me? Where have they? They've just disappeared. Do you know? Do you know? Do you know where they've gone? Do you know where they've gone? That kind of thing. My favourite thing out of that is I cannot... Now, this might be me judging Nick rather than judging you, Phil, but I can't see Nick being the sort of person to say the word darling. Yeah, my first thought would be, where the fuck are these Doritos? <laughs> and then say no, that would word. be so nice it would I would literally go into a cupboard and go you better not have eaten them fucking Doritos <laughs> I mean Doritos wouldn't be my choice like I'm a big Cheetos flame not guy yeah that's a good choice yeah now basically with kids they ate my last bag I bought them for me they're an adult crisp you've got skips and quavers <laughs> they're the kids crisps oh I, oh, I don't, don't know no he's right a quaver is a kids crisp do you know why because no kid can choke on a quaver <laughs> Parent in 101, you can't choke on a skip and you can't choke on a quaver because it gets too wet and it slides down. Hold on, are we going back to porn up comments again? <laughs> I mean, quavers need to put that as a slogan. Unchokeable. <laughs> Unchokeable. I mean, that's a lawsuit waiting to happen. Yeah, you, you, you can't say you can't. There's absolutely no proof that you can choke on this because there will be some dumb kid who will manage to choke on it. Yeah, well, if he stuffs the full fucking bag in his mouth, it's like that, um, what was the shampoo with no more tears, where if you put that in your eyes, you fucking cry. What, what, kid shampoo? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know I know the sort you mean, but I, 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 was it like a particular brand? Yeah, it, it was like a, oh, it was their big slogan thing, wasn't it, at the time, their big pitch for shampoo. And then weren't the bottles made, weren't the bottles in shape of fish? Yeah. Oh, like in the shape of a sailor and stuff like that, wasn't it? Oh, that was hey, matey. Oh, yeah. yo, matey. Or and you seen that guy in America with them pool, you know, the swimming pool noodles. He's like made him into a hat. And you can't get close to him because you hit the noodle. <laughs> <laughs> if you hit your noodle, you're too close. Is that the whole How thing? How tall is this man? I mean, he's, he's like average height, like six foot. Okay, that's not average, calm down. <laughs> I was going to say, that's that's not average height. Yeah. I mean, I would say I'm quite small, so I, average is anything bigger than me. Well, how tall are you? Five seven. Yeah, that's quite, you are quite. Are you five seven? Are you shorter than I'm me? Five seven. I, f- I mean, I'm five, like, ten. Am I five, ten? I don't even know. Why? How, how tall do you think I am? Hold the phone. I can sit here and say uh, six foot's not average, but you're six foot, so you can't... You, the only reason why you're arguing, Phil, is like, oh, I'm above average. No, I know. I don't, I don't, no, I don't think it is average. I wouldn't say six foot is. Yeah, because you're like, oh, I'm above average. I've got to be above average than something. Is that because the world's full of hobbits and dwarfs? <laughs> oh, we're talking a world average. Oh right, oh, that's the, different. the average of the three of us would be would, would might be might be six foot. No, it wouldn't be in the slightest. That's just not the mad. average. Would be like five eleven. Yeah. Oh ish. no, that is true. Because how tall are you? Six Kurt? foot two, hundred and eighty-eight centimeters. No, don't go this. So if you're six two and I, and Nick is five seven, what's halfway between about that? Five eleven. About five eleven, and then I'm five ten. So yeah, be about five ten or eleven. I would say that's probably about average. Yeah, for I'm that. sure there's actually a, t- a statistic on this, but you know, it's like that whole thing of like the average penis being five and a half, and then you go, "Really, that's quite small." And then you go, "Oh, maybe I shouldn't <laughs> share that." Really, it's quite small. It's quite small. I mean, I, I'm not going to continue this. <laughs> We're talking about your massive dick, my huge dong, your big old schlong. Well, I've got the national statistic of a, of a national um, yeah. height of a man is five foot nine. Oh, I'm above average. I mean, the other, the other, the other search results underneath is what is the good height for a man? What is a good height? Now that's a fucking different yeah. question. Is five foot seven a good height for a guy? I wouldn't say you're. No, now this is this is this is the answer to that. Five foot seven is a very good height for a male. Anything taller than that is considered tall. Oh, I'm tall. That's bullshit. Now, this one's a weird one. What's the most attractive height? Is Nick just going through his search history? <laughs> Well, the thing is, because five, five eleven to six, I'd say six two ish is like a decent amount, and then above, like when you get to a certain point, you just start getting freakishly tall. Yeah, yeah. and monsters get in you when you're out of the quilt. 
<laughs> hanging off the end of the bed, that kind of thing. Doorways then become a problem. I don't feel like a tall person. I tend to hunch forward. So I would say I'm, I think I'm like a five foot eight man trapped in a six yeah. foot two body. I don't hold myself up with, you know, properly. it's weird when I actually stand up. The only time that like my height was a big thing, <laughs> big thing. Um, when I was in high school, I, well, do you know when you always had that kid who hit puberty like very early? Well, that was me. I was like, I'd hit puberty in years like end of year six, beginning of year seven. I was the 12 year old with like a full tash and everything. And I was, so I was very tall and I was a fucking ginger kid. That's the only time it was an issue. But then like by the time it came to like year nine, year 10, pretty much everyone had caught up. So like I wasn't that weird looking anymore. So I wasn't in. And well, you weren't inferior anymore. No, not in. Yeah, superior. I meant superior. Why the fuck did I say that? I mean, I was pretty superior or superior. When it came to year 11 as well, like, um, we had a new kid who was also quite a tall ginger person. So, like, he kind of took a lot of that slack. Another me. ginger! Thank you, Ellis. He's well more ginger than me. <laughs> I mean, we're laughing. But, yeah, that's exactly what I did. We are laughing. <laughs> look at the tall ginger kid. Yeah, but look at Ellis. You, you immediately were just going around going, look, look at this guy. Look how freakish he is. I know. Well, he's not calling him now. At least, at least. Halved. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the 75 to 25 percent women that we had listening to the show, yeah. uh, once they hear the porn bit, that might drop off a little. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't care. I thought it was funny. But now you're thinking that women don't watch porn or won't be interested in it. I don't. Uh, I, okay, women definitely watch porn. However, I don't. But they don't. Yeah, go on. I think you're going to say the same thing. I am. That's why. They, I don't think it's something that they talk about and or yeah. find humour and or admit. Yeah, well, that's that. Well, I may have just opened this podcast to a brand new market that you thought was previously untapped. Women who like talking about porn. I mean, if I'm happy to be prove, proven wrong. Well, to be fair, <laughs> I used to listen to a podcast called Guys We Fucked, and it were two women talking about like all their sexual exploits, and it was hilarious. That does sound quite funny. When you've got podcasts like my dad wrote a porno, and you know they they have they have a woman in that. They've let a woman be on be on it. <laughs> they have a woman in that. Like women are allowed to be in this. Yeah, that's another. I've I've watched another channel four or five documentary, which was like a load of mums that made a porno. Ooh. I mean, they weren't in the porno as in they want they want the ones getting. Yeah, they were behind the camera. Oh, I, I, I vaguely remember that. I didn't watch. They it. were, yeah, they were filming it, filming it, and making shows. I mean, a lot of them had a problem with it. <laughs> I've watched that Hot Girls Wanted on Netflix. No, I've not seen that. What's it? it's about cam girls and people going to Hollywood and trying to make it as kind of webcam girls, and then they all get hooked on drugs. And you know. well, t- I've watched some Channel Five on that. I'm, I'm a big documentary buff, mainly about sex, really. To be fair, it sounds weird, but sex documentaries, sex, especially like sex worker documentaries, yeah. are really interesting. I mean, each the, anyone that thinks that really it's disgusting that either a woman or a man would be doing that, how many people have one night stands? And this time you're getting paid for it, so each their own. Yeah, each, yeah. No, I agree completely, completely. I think it's uh, the sex worker industry is something that is massively looked down upon, but reality is it's what is... Like, I know someone who has, who has entered... Oh, I don't really know them that well, I know of them. They've entered into the sex worker industry and they're no longer allowed to see their kids now because they're, the other person doesn't believe that it's a, uh, a good industry to go it's into. An, it's the oldest profession, isn't it? Prostitution, yeah. Porn, no, because they definitely did not have cameras. Yeah, back then. Yeah, but they just got a load of people to stand at the window and watch. That's oh yeah. There true. you go. That's an early cam girl. <laughs> early cam. Go around to Mar- Go around to Mary's. She's gonna get a faff out later. Get a faff. Put out. a gold coin in the bo- bucket. Oh, I'd love, to, I'd love to hear sort of like an ancient Jewish word for that was a slang for vagina. Faff. Faf. Do you think it's always been faf? Do you think faf has just remained in, in people's vocabulary? Yeah. <laughs> just the dawn of just, imagine outside Mary's window, there's just like um, like a letterbox. Like something that you, a bank, you know, where you put like your you checks in that like when a weird draws. Yeah. That you can't get, you know, you know them that I mean? It's security draw. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And people are like chucking like, I don't know, stuff that's worth money. So like, oh, there's a lump of meat. <laughs> What's that get me? Half an hour at the window? Happy days. I don't know why that's tickled me so. I really don't know why that has tickled me so. I mean, much. anyone watching this, I would, I would love some sort of like artist to draw bits of this podcast. 
what of Nick in like, in like Jesus' times going, hey, can anyone show me a bit of faff? Yeah. Oh, that would actually be quite fun, actually. I do know a couple of people who do drawings. That'd be if, if we if we had a good enough following, we could have like a we could have like a fan art section, but we, I don't think yeah, we've got that I much. I think of we following. need a fan art section though. Oh, can I go back to one more uh, cinema story? Yeah, of course, go for it. Um, so um, this used to happen more often than you think. Is uh, people people would come up to the counter and they'd ask for um, they'd ask for popcorn. But they- can I just point out? Can I just stop right there? Right, you're making out that we're all uncultured. I've worked in a cinema before. How long for? Three shifts. And Three I've been to a cinema before. <laughs> <laughs> Proceed. We were always told to be on the lookout for people like you. <laughs> what people who? People who pay for tickets. <laughs> People who smuggle things in. Oh, wait, that's a reference to your set, Nick. Ah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> me, and, me and Nick are like, what, people who just go to the cinema? Yeah. Well, do you know what? I've got a load of vegan fucking Easter eggs that I've bought that taste like dog shit that I could smuggle and just leave in. Why have you got, ve- why have you got vegan Easter eggs? Because it was 62p, Jack, all right? And I thought, how bad... That is sick. How bad can they be? How bad are they? Terrible. I want them now. I mean, I can save you half of this hamster. The Easter egg is a hamster? Yeah. Move free friends, hammy, white strawberry hamster. Dairy free, gluten free, soy free. Happiness free. Vegan. <laughs> Happiness Do you know what? You basically described my diet there, Jack. Happiness free. <laughs> Apologies. Oh, by the way, the cinema story that you were telling, go on. Oh, yeah, right. So, um... People would often, you know, sometimes you get a little bit flustered when all of a sudden you're having to talk to a stranger and you'll say something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you, someone will say, all right, see you later. And you'll go, love you. And you're like, oh, people would come up and they'd oh, sometimes ask for um, salted cock porn. <laughs> Phil, you have been on your own inside for too long thinking about porn. Um, and my response to this would always be, I'm very sorry, we're not that kind of cinema. And then wait to realise what they had just said to me. My, uh, my, when I worked at the cinema, my banter was literally like, someone said, oh, do we get a straw with the drink? And I was like, you can have it for free. There you go. That was... Yeah, that's such a, that's such a dad thing to say. <laughs> and I'm not even a dad. That's like the people that come out when you're washing your car and say, you're going to do mine too. Yeah, fuck off, Alan. <laughs> Oh, fuck off, Alan. Is, is Alan the male carrier? Yeah. Fuck off, Alan. You know, you, yeah, because I'm really just going to spend an hour washing my car yeah. and think, I know what I could do with my time. I could wash Alan's car as well. Yeah. I've warmed myself up. Yeah, I mean, they think they're being funny, and then you're like, you have to do that little laugh back where you're like, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. And it makes you look like a twat. I'm beginning to feel a bit sorry for people who ask to wash the car now. Like, literally, Nick turns around and goes, fuck off, all right? Yeah. Jeez. Well, it's the same thing. No, it is. I feel sorry for anyone who's called Alan now that we've just labelled him. Eh, well, he had it, he had it coming. Labelled him a Karen. Yeah. If, if you are called Alan and you want to send in some fan art of yourself. <laughs> Of themselves. That's called a selfie. I mean, he's just a, he's a typical boring bastard, isn't he? That's what he is. That thinks they're being funny. It is. No, I agree on that one. I will very much give you that. Wasn't your stalker called Alan? Or have I made that David. up? David. Fucking dickhead David. 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 David Quigley. Oh, that now that is a male Karen name. David. <laughs> well, what I noticed the other day is on the Ultra videos now... They uh, turn comments off, so people can't leave comments on the more recent ones now. Oh, I'm never going to be able to let people know how shit they are under the name David Quigley. <laughs> 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 oh. That's obviously a joke. Imagine if it was me all along. <laughs> like, it was me. <laughs> Oh, do you know what though? I wouldn't even be that wounded. I'd find it. I would find that seriously hilarious. Oh, that'd be sick. I mean, it wouldn't be. It'd be quite heartbreaking. But I thought I'd. No, at least in the end, you'd know it were a joke. But I'd just kept it running that long, (laughs) like to a point where you wrote a status about it on Facebook, (laughs) and it was all me all along. Imagine though, if it was you, and then like you were gonna like do this big reveal, but then like I made this status about you, like oh shit, I best not do it now. Like yeah. Fuck that shit. Imagine if I waited till I got on your night again and just revealed it. <laughs> oh, do you know what, though? Part of me's going, this better not be fucking true. <laughs> no, it's not true. I don't have time for that shit. I play worms all day. <laughs> oh, that would be sick, though. That would actually genuinely be sick. I mean, I wish I'd have done it now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't know how much I wish I'd done it just for the laugh. 
Do you know what? Do you know what we've we'll done, Jack? I've just, uh, you know, I've said, oh, it'd be funny if I came on the podcast and you know pretended to be a fan or something like that. Imagine if I came on as David Quigley. <laughs> oh well, we'll have to redo it all now. <laughs> this is David. This is David Quigley. This is uh, the person who thinks that Jack is a shit comedian. Can I do my David? Can I do a David Quigley voice? Yeah, go for it. Go for it now. <clears throat> right, I'm just getting just getting into character. How, how, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be quite nasal for this. Uh, 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 hello, hello. Hi, my name's David Quigley. Hi, David. And I don't think you're a particularly good comedian. <laughs> I don't know why this is so funny. <laughs> I don't know why it's tickling me, and I'm the one who's the butt of the joke. Because I once read a book on Stuart Lee and I bumped into Bobcat Goldthwaite in the uh, foyer at, at uh, Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. I know more about comedy than you. Uh, what What do you not particularly like about my comedy? <laughs> oh, where to start? The beginning. We'll start at the beginning. Well, I think you. I think when you 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 hold the microphone very incorrectly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how do you hold a microphone? In both hands. <laughs> Um, be- actually, before you get into more hating on me, what do you think about uh, Nick Crooks? Yeah, who's he? Right, this is too far, <laughs> David. That's a bigger insult. Too man. far now. I'm involved. Uh, is, is he? He's, he sounds like a hilarious bloke. You know what? Though, at least for that Philip Stanley, he's a bigger cunt. <laughs> yeah, it's always it's always the voice, man. The voice is the voice is the funnier to do than anything else. I don't know why the voice is the thing that's making me laugh more. <laughs> it sounds like Stephen Merchant on some fuck with a cold. Stephen Merchant with a cold. It's my best quote ever, that. Uh, well, thanks, David. Thanks for visiting. Um, uh, well, it's been my pleasure. <laughs> I hope you get better at comedy soon. Oh, I won't. Yeah, I know you won't. <laughs> it does sound like Stephen Merchant with a cold. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, David Quigley. <laughs> That was the Night Skies of Comedy Podcast with Jack Vincent and Nick Crooks. Recording from their own home and heavily fucking edited. Follow the matter. I am Jack the end of Nick Crooks comedy. Why don't you? Hashtag Night Skies.